Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and I am a neurodivergent woman. I am autistic, I have ADHD, I have aphantasia and a memory disorder called SDAM, which stands for Severely Deficient Autobiographical Memory. And I have videos on all of these subjects. I'm really excited to make today's video because my comment sections of several of my videos have been blowing up and I just really love hearing from y'all, hearing y'all's opinions and thoughts and adding to the conversation. And it's just been amazing. And I've been trying to get to as many of the comments as I can. And I read through all of them, but I have been getting so many more than I've ever gotten before that I just haven't had time to actually respond to all of them. It is interesting too, because some of them, um, a lot of times in text, autistic people don't understand sarcasm or sometimes we're not even sure if we're being made fun of. So some of the comments I've just skipped over because I'm like, is this person being genuine? Are they trying to be sarcastic? Are they being mean to me? Um, and that is an actual problem that many autistic people face. And usually I will just ignore these kinds of things in real life and online. Um, but on a couple of them, I have gone ahead and inquired and have found out that, um, for instance, like one of them that I thought was sarcasm, the person was like, no, 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 it was a genuine question. And we had a lovely dialogue back and forth in the, uh, the comment section. Um, so that's great. Um, one thing that a lot of autistic communities and spaces are using are tone tags. So, you know, adding a backslash G E N for genuine means that, or P backslash P O S means this is a positive comment. So sometimes if a comment could be maybe taken both ways, um, these tone tags really help. I'm really good with most of the time with emojis, some autistic people actually do struggle with interpreting emojis too. And it depends, but I'm usually pretty good at emojis. Um, and that goes to the different degree at which various autistic people understand facial expressions. Because I'm a high masking autistic person, I have learned how to interpret facial expressions for the most part. And it depends on how masked I am, whether or not I do face <laughs> expressions. There's a lot of times when I'm editing back a video and I will say something like, I'm so excited. And I add that, I'm adding that tone excited uh, because that's again masked. I know that I'm supposed to, but I will sometimes forget to change my face to actually show that excitement too, because it's not natural. That is masking. A lot of autistic people have a flat affect and we forget to, we actually have to physically think to change our faces. And like, now that doesn't mean that I won't sometimes naturally spontaneously smile, but I can also be very, very excited about something and have a flat affect. It just depends on how stimulated I am, overstimulated. Um, autism is not a static condition. So many things can change from day to day. And you'll see that as you watch through any of my videos, um, depending on the topic and how regulated I am will depend on the speed of my speech and the tone of my voice and uh, facial expressions. Okay, but today's video, <laughs> um, the whole point of this vlog is to really just highlight the autistic experience from a late diagnosed autistic woman in real time. With as, I try to do as little editing as possible because I want to show other autistic people that you are not alone and I want to show allistic, which is non-autistic people, um, maybe some insights into an autistic mind, which is very much what this video is about. So um, I got the question on TikTok the other day, can you please explain some of the social constructs that um, autistic people struggle with? And so I answered that TikTok just kind of like off the top of my brain, 
because I like to process out loud and it helps me. But I have kind of thought of some that question a little bit deeper and I want to kind of delve into it. Um, so some of the social constructs, I'm going to start off easy with like beauty standards. Um, a lot of the beauty standards that we have today are just kind of a social agreement and you can be shunned if you do not follow that social agreement, such as shaving your legs. So a lot of autistic people don't want to shave their legs, but if they don't, then they might get teased or made fun of. Um, I have noticed that it has become a trend more that more people that are not autistic are starting to not shave their legs. And I think that's pretty cool. I actually do shave my legs because again, I was late diagnosed and I was very much always trying to blend into my peers. And so when my peers started shaving their legs, I started to and now I'm used to that feeling of having smooth legs. But my kids, my teens, um, when they were kind of the age that it was, you know, if you want to start shaving your legs, they were like, um, no, that makes no sense. I like my body how it is. I don't want to. And it's like, okay, cool. No problem. Um, there are some other issues that, you know, autistic people do a lot of times struggle with hygiene because of sensory issues. Things like washing our faces can be very hard. I hate water splashed on my face. So it's a real struggle. Um, but, you know, I also don't want huge acne breakouts. So when hygiene equals health conditions or health problems, I think it is important if it's just a personal preference and it does not affect your health, then that is just a social construct. And it's like, why bother? Deodorant falls into this category too. Um, I like deodorant. My kids don't. That can be a struggle because um, when some social constructs happen because we have to live together in small spaces and when somebody else doesn't want to have body odor around, it becomes a conversation. <laughs> okay, so let's go into like a little bit a bigger, I guess, social construct, and that would be uh, country borders. So country borders are a social construct. I understand how they happened and how our planet got divided up into little sections off of different governments, but it makes no sense to me as an autistic person why I need a lot of legal documentation to visit another part of the planet that I belong to. Like if I wanted to go visit Thailand because or like South Korea. I love Asian cuisine and culture. And I would love to just pop on a plane, you know, assuming I could afford it or whatever. Money's a whole nother social construct, but we're not gonna get into that one today. Um <laughs> I I want to be able to just like go to places on this earth and visit them without having to worry about legal documentation. It's a, it's, it's a complete social construct. The fact that you can't just decide you want to move to another country without applying for visas and citizenships and all this other weird stuff. I intellectually understand it is a thing, but it's dumb to me. Um, Another social construct is the public school system. Um, you know, before uh, what's industrialization, uh, kids were taught at home and we learned from apprenticeships and learned from our communities and things like that. Then for, you know, reasons, the public school system was invented, but it's broken. And we all acknowledge as a society that the public school system is broken. And I don't know what the alternative answer is. I'm not saying I have solutions to some of these. Um, but the fact that people keep using a broken system doesn't make sense to me. Um, <sighs> teachers are amazing. They do not get the credit that they deserve. They are working in a broken system. It's not their fault. 
And the pandemic showed that if drastic changes need to happen quickly, they can. And yet we still failed our teachers and our kids during the pandemic with the public school system. Okay, so hear me out. I'm going to say my words. I'm going to say them how I mean them. Don't add meaning. Um, I am a very inclusive, LGBTQ friendly person. Gender is a construct. Um, and what I mean by that is what we assign to feminine and masculine as far as objects go is silly. Um, and it changes with the times. Pink used to be a male color. Um, names like Ashley and Leslie were only for men. Men were the first ones to wear high heels and wigs. Over time, these became feminine. Our society has made up what is masculine and feminine. and it's just arbitrary. And that's why I think there is a very large percent of autistic people that identify um, transgender, non-binary, that kind of thing, because, you know, gender is a social construct. I'm not going to go too much more into that one. Um, but I would love for you to have polite comments down below to add to any of these topics. Um, okay, let's go for another easier one. Social niceties, such as empty greetings. Um, I don't know what other countries do. I know different countries have different greetings, but when you walk down the street in America, a lot of times people say, hey, how are you? And you're not supposed to answer with how you really feel. You're supposed to say, I'm great, and how are you? And they're supposed to say, I'm fine, thanks. And then you go about your day. It makes no sense to most autistic people. Like this whole um, interaction doesn't make sense at the cash register when you're paying. Hi, how are you? Like, don't ask that. <laughs> like, that doesn't make sense unless you really want to know. Whew. A lot of autistic people will answer. I mean, I went a long time not realizing that you were supposed to say, I'm fine, thanks. Um, I still have a really hard time struggling with asking back. I don't know if any of y'all can hear. I'm clicking my fidget of the day. Um, it's a it's from Specs, which I hope one day to uh, be sponsored by them, but I'm not at this time. But I love Specs fidgets. They are amazing. Okay. Anyway, distracting myself. Okay. What was I talking about? Um, empty greetings. Yeah, so when somebody asks me, I've learned to finally just say I'm fine because the dead silence otherwise is like more awkward than I'm willing to put up with. But I never ask, how are you back? Unless I really want to know. But then it doesn't matter because if I ask, how are you back to the cashier, they're just going to say I'm fine. And it's sometimes very obvious they are not fine, but whatever. Um. <laughs> There are other ones. I, when so, where I went to college in Texas A&M University, uh, the there's a tradition. The greeting is just to say howdy. That's like literally as you pass people on the street, you raise your hand up and you say howdy. I like that one because that's just like a hi. I'm acknowledging that you're a human being walking past me, but that's it, right? Like if we're going to have a conversation, then let's actually have a real conversation. If you're going to ask me how I'm doing that day, then I want you to actually care. And that doesn't mean I'm going to like unburden my entire life story to you. But don't ask if you are just expecting that I'm fine. Okay, another one that absolutely struggles with me and so many autistic people is the hierarchy of classes and people. To most autistic people, we really struggle with understanding hierarchical um, relationships. We don't think that any one person is more important than any other person. 
the president of the United States to me is no more important than any other human. They just have more responsibilities. To me, a boss may have more responsibilities than a checkout person, but they're not more important because they have the word boss attached to them. This can get a lot of autistic people in trouble because allistic people feel oftentimes that if they have the title of boss, then that means they are more important. And I don't believe that any one human has more importance than any other human on this earth. That just is so binary to me. Now, that doesn't mean that I feel like all humans are good people. I feel like there are people who um, make bad choices. And if they're not making those, I don't want to get into gray areas. It, it, it can get confusing because I know some people make bad choices because of mental illness. And while they need to be held accountable for those choices, I can understand where their struggle and I feel like it's a failure on society as a whole for allowing our mental health crisis to get to a place where it is. Um, but I'm not excusing bad behaviors. That one's really complicated. Um, but I do believe that there are people who do bad things on purpose and those people really, really confuse me. I don't understand how to relate to somebody like an internet troll or obviously a murderer or a thief, like these things my brain has a really hard time comprehending why people would make choices that harm themselves or others. But beyond that, I feel like hierarchical, you know, just because someone's a boss doesn't mean they're more important. I think I've already said that, so I'm not going to repeat it again. I've got some notes today. Come on. I think he went to sleep. Okay, we'll end on a, another biggie one. Okay, hear me out. Again, I'm going to try to be very clear with my words. Um, it is so easy for people who are allistic or neurotypical to put in meaning that autistic people do not say and this is why a lot of autistic people do not talk on these subjects because we have been trained that people are not going to understand our words and they're going to misinterpret them. And so we usually don't talk on these things, but I'm going to say this thing out loud and it is not um, anything other than what I'm saying. Race is a social construct. Now, I'm going to follow that up very quickly that I do believe that systemic racism is a issue and it's a problem. And um, people in, especially in America, are inherently racist because it is how our society has developed. And we need to deconstruct the racist problems that are happening and work towards a more united world. But myself as an autistic person and a lot of other autistic people, we see people as humans first. We are all humans on planet earth and we happen to have different skin tones. Then there's a lot of social constructs that happen on top of that. That's all I mean by that, okay? I am not belittling the fact that racism does not does exist. Racism absolutely exists. So please do not misconstrue my words. And um, I hear people say you cannot be colorblind. 
And I understand that because when people say things like, oh, I don't see you as a different color than me. For one thing, that's stupid and it's a lie because our skin tones don't all match. Like that's beautiful. And it's, it's a lie to say that we're the same color when we're not. <laughs> but again, with the hierarchy thing, I'm not going to base somebody's worth on their skin tone. To me, no matter what skin tone you have, you are still a valuable human, important human being. I'm going to judge you on how you respect yourself and others and the planet. Is nothing to do with skin tone. And I understand systemic racism and that being brought up in the society that I'm brought up into, inherently, I'm going to be racist and I'm learning to unpack and understand where that may have affected me. And like I've said many times on this vlog, I'm learning out loud. I am learning about autism and ADHD and aphantasia and my memory disorder and other disabilities so I can be a disability advocate. I am also learning about the Black Lives Matter movement and transgender movement and the harm that's being happened to our transgender families. I am not above learning more things. Race is still a social construct. <sighs> and I and I mean that in the most What's the right word? Um academic of ways. I want to I want to end on a nice one. I don't have any more nice ones. <laughs> and I don't mean that that one's a, a mean one. It's just I know that one's going to be more controversial because people are not going to take my words how they're intended. Um and and again, that's why so many autistic people um stay masked. We don't these are the words you don't say out loud. You don't say these things because a hundred percent guaranteed someone's going to misunderstand my words. Um, that's another thing that I want to add on here. It blows my mind so many times where I will say something and I feel like I'm speaking the same English. And I, I, I actually have a lot of subscribers that English isn't your first language. So, um, you know, this obviously doesn't apply, but for people that English is their first language, and I'm speaking the same language as you, and I have a certain meaning in my head, and this goes for a lot of autistic people, we say one thing, and then we get back a different response, and we're like, that's not what I said. I literally said this. And then when you go into it further with them, they will actually finally admit that they, when you say something, one thing, they are adding in all of this extra meaning behind the scenes that we're not even aware that's happening. So it happens over and over and over again. Um, I had, oh gosh, I had a really good example. I can't remember it. There was another one uh, a couple months ago I was at the pharmacy and the pharmacist said that I could only get one pill a day. And I said, does that mean I have to come to the pharmacy every day? Those were the words I said. Does that mean I have to come to the pharmacy every day? Like I thought they were going to administer one pill a day. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. Like, how can that even be? And she said, yes. And I said, well, I'm not filling this prescription. I need to find another solution. She's like, okay, whatever. And then that, wasted my time, my doctor's time, insurance's time, which I don't care about wasting their time, but like all this confusion to find out that what had happened was the doctor wanted me to have two pills a day, but my insurance was only going to approve one pill a day. 
it had nothing to do with me coming to the pharmacy every single day. It just meant that I was only going to, like I was going to get, I don't know, it was like a two week supply. So I was only going to get 14 pills instead of the 28 that the doctor wanted me to have. And the pharmacist said, you only get one pill a day. And I, I'm like, how did you misunderstand when I asked, does that mean I have to come here every day for that one pill? I still can't wrap my head around it, but that's just one tiny example of so many times where I've said one thing and then the words get taken and mean something else. Another one was when I was trying to schedule a haircut and I don't remember the, all the examples, but like it was something about trying to schedule the time for the haircut. And I said one thing, it came back and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so confusing. And yeah, so saying the words out loud today, <laughs> hope I don't regret it because um, I come from a truly open hearted, genuine place. I, I love people. I love humanity. I don't understand trolls. I don't understand people who are mean on purpose. I understand that hurt people hurt people and we need to break these cycles. And we need to have videos like this where people are willing to say the hard things so that we can kind of start to learn about each other and how our brains work. Thank you for watching and I will see you on another video.